John, Ricky and Rob are three unemployed lads about to take on one of Britain's toughest jobs. Fucking have it. Oh, it's going to be hard. If my arms aren't massive after this, I don't know what we're doing. They don't know it yet, but they'll be working at the UK's largest travelling theme park. It's relentless, risky and exhausting work. But if they stay the course, they could put their old life behind them and walk away with a job. Thunderworld is Britain's only mobile theme park. But while visitors enjoy all the fun of the fair, a dedicated workforce is working 24-7, 52 weeks a year to make it all happen. Dismantling, moving and reconstructing the heavy machinery is tough and dangerous work. And the deadlines are tight and unchanging. The three workshy slackers will be trained and supervised by James Mellers. It is a tough job. People come into it just thinking it's going to be fun and games. They've not been able to handle a normal job. I don't know how they're going to stick this. James runs Thunderworld with his brother Edward. They've worked in the business all their lives and both know the meaning of hard work. We move it, it's our business. And I know that when my legs are feeling tired, my boys are feeling doubly as tired. Four generations of the Mellors family have travelled Europe with their thrill rides. They only make their living when the attractions are open, so all their energy goes into moving location quickly and safely. On the roller coaster, it's about 130 lifts or something with a crane. So you can't afford for the crane to stop and wait. At the end of the day, we're here to run a business, so we can't afford to see things not working. In Liverpool, 19-year-old John McEwen is a familiar face with the local police. I've had my scrimps and my scrapes, but uh, mostly it's been cars. Cars have been arrested for a few times. He was eventually thrown out of home after driving a car through the front window following a row. My mum did look rather shocked when I stepped out the car. I said, hi, how are you? <laughs> Just pop around for a cup of tea. His dad hopes he can turn things around before it's too late. An idea of Wales. I hope John becomes wealthy and uh, happy rather than end up in jail. I couldn't ask for a better dad. I couldn't ask for a better mum. Unfortunately, yeah, they could probably both ask for a more responsible son. <laughs> On a housing estate in Camden, central London, Ricky Lucas is settling down with his mum to their daily routine of daytime television. Well, because I haven't got a job, like, and I've um, got my own room and my mum cooks me dinner and that, sometimes I think, yeah, I've got it quite easy. I think I've sport him. I mean, I think now it's too late. I wish I would have made him more independent. Working life is a total mystery to 19-year-old Ricky. The longest time he spent employed is two weeks, and that was over three years ago. Me and one of my mates, we got um, this Korean job. The first day, we were just riding about all day, dropping things off, and we like got half an hour lunch break. By the time I got home, I was tired. But life will have to change for this mummy's boy. She's had enough. He's 19 now. It's about time that he got a job. A Britain stuffish job, I think I could do it. Well, I would try anyway. Rob Smith has been lazing about in Aldershot in Hampshire, hoping the work will come to him. I could have done more to work myself. Maybe when I was younger. Um, didn't really tend to do it, though. He's 22 and struggles to motivate himself. I can be lazy at times. Wake up when I wake up, trying to get up about 10-ish, though. Um, trying to get my clock in to get in up during the mornings rather than in the afternoons. Finding work has proved difficult. As soon as you become unemployed, you immediately get classed as a bum. just want to do a job that shows me as a person doing well instead of bumming out again. The three work hopefuls set off for the East Midlands. They still have no idea what lies ahead. They think that it's their last night of freedom, so they hit the Stamford Midland Fair. And Thunderworld's premier ride, the Magic Mouse. 
where James Mellors has a surprise for them. Hi boys, hope you've had a good time. I'm James Mellors. I'm one of the directors of Thunder World Travelling Theme Park and you're going to be working with me for the next week. Taking this ride down and setting it up again before next Friday. Fucking hell! Not only this one, we've also got the River Rapids and all the other rides as well. Fucking so welcome hell. aboard, boys. <laughs> Got you some jackets, okay? But tonight, obviously, you've not had a full training, so I can only show you the basics for tonight. Yeah. And aside from tomorrow, you'll start to see the work side. All right? The shocks don't stop there. As part of the Thunderworld family, they'll be spending the next week sleeping on site. You are having a fucking giraffe. <laughs> no, oh, nah. Nah, I meant to have a shower, didn't I? Oh, it's going to be hard. I ain't used to this. James explains that they have only one week to pack up all the rides and re-erect them at their next destination. 165 miles away in Bristol. If we don't meet our targets, then the rides won't be set up in time. And that isn't going to happen. They are going to be set up in time, even if we have to work a 24-hour shift. There's still an hour before the rides close, so the boys are broken in doing the easy part of the job. You want to work on this one, generally what he's doing at the moment. So far, Ricky isn't too impressed. I think the fare's good, but I think this is hard work. No, not hard work, but I think it's a bit boring. You think this part's boring? Yeah, this part's boring, but I've got a feeling that there's going to be more to this. Within 72 hours, the rides need to be on the road. With over 1,200 individual parts, several miles of cabling, dozens of strips of rail track and carriages, the boys will have their work cut out. But that was a lot of nuts and bolts. So that big one over there, right, it's got a very high bit to it. I don't do heights. Coming up, the boys discover the meaning of true work. You have to be up early, I don't even have to eat. It's a bit of a sweat compared to normal. But I think I can't go on. And one does a runner. I'm just going to go over and speak to Justin in a minute, see if he knows where he's gone. But there should be no reason why he's disappeared. Woodhouse is on a mission to turn a down. John, Ricky and Rob are three unemployed lads who reckon they can do hard labour. Britain stuff is job, I think I would do it. Well, I would try anyway. The lads have come to Stanford to work for James Mellors, who runs Thunderworld, a travelling theme park. Welcome aboard, boys. It's the break they need. First, they'll have to prove themselves over the next week as they help transfer the rides from Lincolnshire to Bristol. They've spent their first evening working the rides, but at the end of the night, it's time to get their hands dirty. Fucking ridiculous. We don't even get gloves if you cut rubbish. That is terrible. Can you see anybody else picking this up? Really? No, you can't, can you? The lads finish at 11 and settle in for their first night. John and Rob get to grips with their new surroundings. What are we having for dinner? We're having tea and biscuits. But Ricky is having doubts. I think it's going to be hard. That's fine. And we have to cook our own food, which makes it much worse. Tonight will be their last full night of sleep as the job steps up a gear in the morning. The rides open in two hours' time, but James needs the boys on site to prepare for tonight's breakdown. Come on, boys. Eight o'clock. There's plenty to do now, which will save valuable time later. You want to go with Justin? You're going to take the flags down. John is sent up 50 feet to the top of the Magic Mouse. I'm just going to a little sample and see how he is for heights, because it's only a, a hill, if you know what I mean, but the thing is you can look down. If we get the flags down now, while your hands are clean, so you see he's doing it tonight and getting things dirty. Rob is assigned to Kiwi, who, after 19 years, is one of the most experienced of the 30-man team. I've just unhitched and hitched up the trailer, which is a first for me, so new experience gained, definitely worthwhile. While Ricky is given the undemanding task of seeding the areas of grass worn away by the public. But once again, he's unhappy with the work. It's hard because that you don't hardly get any sleep. You, you have to be up early. Like, I don't even have nothing to eat and I have to start work already. 
and they're saying that we have to fi we're finishing at two in the morning and getting up at six. So no, I won't do nothing like this, man. The rides open in Stamford for the final time. Rob and John are enjoying the lighter side of the job, but Ricky's still moaning. It's mainly the times that we have to get up. It's making it a bit hard for me because I ain't used to getting up at eight in the morning. I just start to open the cars now and let people out. I'm getting a little bit more trust. I think. I don't know why they trust me with people. I wouldn't. With James busy working behind the scenes, it isn't until late afternoon that he realises he's a man down. Ricky seems to have disappeared. Um, I think so I'm just going to go over and speak to Justin in a minute, see if he knows where he's gone. But there should be no reason why he's disappeared. Every member of the crew has a role to play. With Ricky missing, the others are put under more pressure. They've completely left me on their own just to run this half of the, uh, the roller coaster. So uh, I've been dropped in the shit a little bit. James isn't impressed, so he goes searching for Ricky and some answers. Uh, what's going off then? You had enough? Pardon? You're going home? Well, what's wrong then? Why do you want to go already? It's going, innit? I can't stress that. I need to go home. It's stress? I know we ain't even done much work, but I need to go home. You've I'm going home. nothing yet. Because I don't want to do this, innit? You don't want to do this? You don't even fancy giving it a go? What's worrying about you? The work? No, it's not the work. I just can't. I can't do it, innit? It's simple. I thought he would have given it a little bit more than what he has. I mean, he's, he's done absolutely nothing. I thought I could do it. But I, I, I said I could do it when I was at home and I was like, yeah, I could do this. But obviously I couldn't do it, innit? He doesn't like even to think of any work, never mind actually do it. If he didn't like it afterwards, then fair enough. It's only a week. He hasn't got to carry on doing this. He could have just looked at it, put it down as a bad experience. He needs somebody to, to mother him and look after him, I think. With no goodbyes, Ricky's ride comes to an end. As night falls, James calls Kiwi and Edward together and restructures the workload. Ricky's early departure means everyone has more to do. Ricky's gone, so he's down and out of the question. I think we could put John on one of the trucks. We need to know what teams we've got there to organise them so that as one job's finished, the next one's ready to be started. We don't want anybody waiting. That, that's time lost. The lad's first job is to help the team dismantling the Magic Mouse roller coaster. Removing a kilometre of cables and over 400 girders and pieces of track involves 130 crane lifts and will take eight men 14 hours. Rob throws himself into it with enthusiasm. He's a fucking lord. While Kiwi keeps a watchful eye on John as he guides each of the 30 pieces of track onto the low loaders. So the higher you get up, right. get a hold of it, control it, right. quicker it goes in. A lot of the time, I'll be on Robert John to make sure that they're doing what they should be doing and not somewhere where they shouldn't be. Um, because obviously, it is a dry construction, and if you do the wrong thing at the wrong time, somebody could potentially get hurt. The lads will have to remain alert throughout the night. Breakdown works at a furious pace. James is a millionaire. Ever seen that James Bond movie with the bloke that jumps out of the airplane and never sleeps? That's James. Midnight. Rob has been lifting and carrying since 8 a.m. It hasn't gone unnoticed. I think they'll both be feeling it a little bit. John probably not as much as Rob because Rob has been doing a lot of the lifting and moving things around today, whereas John has generally just been climbing on off the trailers. It's called the breakdown for good reason. Rob is learning how tough the job can be. Oh, I am feeling fucked. Right about now. After a lifetime of slacking, Rob is experiencing an unusual sensation. Real hard work. Fuck me. I was just wondering how much more he wants to get done. And I think I can't go on. My shoulders have all locked up. 
due to lack of physical work. After 18 hours work, James calls it a night. Rob is totally shattered. Tomorrow, they need to finish dismantling over half the roller coaster. Greasy Stafford kebab. How wonderful is that? Hard work. Very hard work. Manually hard, if anything. Um, the day's been a very long day. So, I'm feeling quite knackered. It's 8 o'clock. So, that's what? 8 till 3 in the morning. Mum, I'm sure I've never worked hard in my life. <laughs> Sunday morning, 6 a.m. Stamford is sleeping, but James Mellors isn't. Come on, John. Slacked sleep dish. You don't need your beauty sleep that much. By sundown tonight, both the Magic Mouse roller coaster and the River Rapids water ride need to be dismantled so the trucks can head for Bristol in the morning. It's four hours sleep here, and they expect us to move all those big fucking tracks and shit. Fucking have it! The lads are facing a gruelling 12-hour day. Their first task is to finish de-rigging the coaster, moving the remaining girders and rail track onto the lorries. Rob's work the previous day has left him next to useless. How are you feeling? Not great. Pretty much the situation with my back is it's still pretty fucking tense and stiff and hurting mega. I think it's hit them a bit, you know, uh, lack of sleep, when you're not used to it. Uh, we're used to it all the time. Still affects me after 19 years, but, you know, uh, we learn how to go over it. Even for workers as experienced as Kiwi, losing Rob, even temporarily, is a blow. With the roller coaster still standing, they risk missing their deadline to leave Stamford. But James thinks he's diagnosed the real problem. I think his main problem now is it's a mental pain not something physical. I think throughout the course of the day you'll notice he'll just get back into the swing. Trust me, I'm a doctor. With Ricky gone and Rob sidelined, there's even more pressure on John to impress. It's a far cry from his life back in Liverpool. Average Sunday day. Do fuck all, basically. It's a bit of a shrek compared to normal. John's never worked so hard in his life. He seems to be a model employee. John, very good. Very good. Very popular. Good uh, job. <laughs> He's doing well, actually, John. I've been uh, quite surprised with him. Of all his mouth and everything, I just didn't think he was going to hack it. Still got his hat on backwards, though, look. It's cool. <laughs> cool. Hey, mate, you got a ciggy? Rob has dodged work all morning. By noon, James has had enough. While the crew tackle the heavy lifting, Rob's given the simple task of collecting base blocks. Put small pieces in there, try and sack them neat. Since waking up, I just don't think he's actually woken himself up. I think um, originally what he'd done was he got himself in a bit of a lapse. You've just got to be determined and not let it get the better of you. 3D giant Tetris. Have you played it yet? Easing his way back into work has done the trick for Rob. A little bit more subtle. Still hurts, but it's not as tense as it was. So that's better. At one o'clock, the final piece of the roller coaster is lifted onto a lorry. 24 hours ago, the Magic Mouse was thrilling Stamford. Now, it's a pile of metal waiting for its next adventure. And the lads are left with very different opinions about the work. So what do you think to it, then? Yeah, yeah, it's a good job. I mean, it's an experience I never thought I'd have. Do you so, enjoy seeing it up, everything come down and be yeah. a part of the team? It's nice to see how it's all done and how much work gets put into it. It's work. There's no enjoyment in that. There's no let up though, as the boys are moved straight on to the most awkward part of the breakdown dismantling the River Rapids rafting ride. Time is against them, and James is all too aware of the pitfalls that could lie ahead. 
the weather is bad, we could have a breakdown with a crane, we could, there is so many things that can go wrong. And that is the problem. That is why we have to try and use the time to our advantage. Packing up the river rapids is a huge task. There are over a hundred individual parts to the course, an escalator-style carrier belt and two giant water pumps that move 58,000 gallons of water round the course. Rob and John draw the shortest straw of all, clearing up all the excess surface water. The new set of gloves there, because yours are about worn through. <laughs> Good sign of hard-working hands, look. Right. So look at your ones. Ah, still plenty on them. Oh, got a bit, First time you've done something in your life, eh? <laughs> They've done well, but James wants more. John is shattered and feels he's given enough. I'm fucked. I'm the only one that's done anywhere, and the other one's whinging about it. If I'm here to do a job, you get on with it, don't you? Don't stand around, fucking, no, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. But now, as far as I'm concerned, I've had a go. When they've asked me to do something, I've done it. I haven't sat down. I mean, I've had ten minutes to myself today. John's in luck, as James feared storm clouds are gathering. Right, we've just decided we're going to call it a night, because if this rain's going to come in, we're not going to get anywhere with that and the wind. So just forget it now, pack the tools away, and then we'll just come out and start fresh in the morning. It's that big black cloud that we seen. It looked like it was going to come in for a storm. And with the cover, it's very, very difficult when it's windy or when it's wet. So in the wind and rain, it would cause a bit of a problem. While it might be music to the boys' ears, for James, the delay is a potential disaster. Eight a.m. Thunderworld should be on the road to Bristol, but the rain has left them behind schedule. They cannot afford any more delays. Finish off where you left off. Squeegees out. Carry on. Already on right. The water rafting ride needs to be bone dry before they can pack it away. After last night's rain, they're back to square one. We're really waiting on you three now. The quicker you get that water gone, the quicker we can fold it. With James up against it, the pressure is on the boys to get the surface water cleared, while the crew load the lorries. The extra effort they've put in has made up lost time, but James has spotted another problem. The entrance onto the site where we are is just nine feet wide, so it's quite narrow for us to get over anyway. And as we've come out this morning, three cars are parked right in the way of the bridge, which means now we can't get any lorries over the bridge. So we've got to hope that they move in time, otherwise that could really delay plans now. James investigates, leaving his brother Edward to oversee the final push to clear the ride. We haven't done anything yet. Come on. Finally, the massive tarpaulin can be folded. Take your time. But no matter how much work is completed, they're still blocked in. Everything is time. We can't afford to waste time because something silly like this could always happen and it just puts a delay on it. For James, it's a major problem. But for the lads, it's a chance to grab a moment's rest. The odd bits to come, the build. The quick bit is the same farm. It's quick. It's quick, it's a two day job. It's but the builds is, is a four day job. So it's going to be even more tiring and it's going to be even more stressful. After five hours, one car still seems to be in the way. But James and his crew can't wait any longer. They attempt to squeeze the fully loaded lorries through. Thunderworld eventually leaves Stamford, over seven hours late. They should already be in Bristol. Now they'll have to drive through the night to make up lost time. Coming up, with a job offer on the line, rivalry hots up. He's doing shite today with these. Let's go to Rob done some fucking work. He's lazy. And one of them goes off the rails. Wrong curry. That's just pure beer. You can't handle it. Don't drink it. Britain's largest travelling theme park is showing three young layabouts the true meaning of work. If they prove their worth, they could earn themselves a job. John from Liverpool and Rob from Aldershot have left their old lifestyles behind and have thrown themselves into it. 
but Ricky only lasted 24 hours before heading back to his home in London. Because I've been living at home, that's why this made it so hard. And uh, obviously I've had it easy, innit? This ain't my thing. I don't, in the future, I don't think I'll ever be working doing something like this without my lesson. James and Edward Mellers have just four days to get Thunderworld ready to open its doors to the people of Bristol. They're already well behind schedule. With several hours of lost time to make up, James reads the riot act to the lads. When we pulled down, we give you both a bit of leeway because you didn't know what you was doing. You've done well. You tended to do a lot of walking around and looking. Yeah. This time now, you've done it. You know what the machines yeah, look no, like. Yeah. I want you to get stuck in with the rest of the boys. Hopefully now today, they know what the rides look like. They know how it's going to go. So we want to see what they've remembered, what they've learned, and if they're just going to get their head down and uh, carry on. As they set to work laying the foundations of the water rafting ride, James assesses their progress so far. At the moment, if I had to choose between the two, I'd say John was the better one. He does seem to be a lot quicker, more agile, he'll climb about, whereas Rob's a little bit more cautious on everything he does. John is sent to help Edward Mellers build the space roller ride. Something new to do. Don't mind. New people to work with. He doesn't win half as much as James as well. <laughs> he seems more than more than able, more than willing, so probably he's uh, probably just when he's been at home, I don't know, he's just not been too bothered to find work, but yeah, he seems like he's enjoying it, so I don't think we're giving him enough pain. <laughs> Not a problem, mate. Fucking cheesecake. You'll never catch me doing that. At all. While John's riding high, Rob's vertigo is threatening to scupper his chances of winning a job, which could change his life. You notice the other boys, they're climbing up and moving, whereas you're standing there waiting for one person to pass something to you. Go and help him. If you're actually stood there with your hands by the side, you're doing nothing. Right, OK. In the afternoon, John and Rob join forces to erect the beer tent. Yeah, I want to do well for the lads, you know. They put a lot of effort in and trust in us, so I want to put it back. Hopefully it'll be worth it for all the beers that I have in it. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. At the end of another back-breaking day, Rob and John head to the pub for a well-earned pint. In three days, Thunderworld opens to the public, but there's plenty of work still to complete. The River Rapids is bone dry. The space roller is completely static, and the roller coaster is still sat on the back of a lorry. And after last night's antics, it looks like James is a man down. Not right. even moving. I don't know. He, he said this morning that he's been ill and he's been throwing up. John, come on. It's got half six. Houston, we have a problem. What's the matter? Too much alcohol? No, I threw up on the bed. Threw up on your bed? Wrong curry. Wrong curry? Go on, see if you can get yourself up then. Oh, I haven't got time to be messing about with you, for you. It's oh. nothing to do with a curry. No. You just can't handle your beer. You were doing well yesterday. Come on, don't go and let yourself down. John's drunken lapse has blown any respect he had previously earned. He's not out today. I'm a bit disappointed with him, actually, because I thought he was showing a bit of promise. That's a shame, because it's a lack of commitment, and that's probably why he's, he's not finding work anywhere. While John is left lying in last night's Vindaloo, Rob takes advantage of the situation to earn some brownie points. Going for it today, isn't he? Rob is working a lot better today without John. I think it's one, I think he's getting a little bit more attention because I'm really now just concentrating on Rob because John's not here. He really is performing and living up, whereas John is more self-motivated, could do the job himself, but obviously he's easily distracted.